Hey everybody, welcome back to The Barber Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, and today, and today, dramatic crescendo, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, I am looking forward to this so much. There is a new distillery that is finally available in Minnesota. And if it's you've not watched, a new distillery, but it's well, new to us here in Minnesota. Yeah, if you've watched the channel for any time, you know there's certain things that we just don't see very often in Minnesota. This bourbon, go ahead and bring it on in. We've got, bam, Penelope Toasted Barrel. So Penelope, finally available in Minnesota. We're Penelope. starting to see it on the shelves. We plastic. We, we didn't take the plastic uh, off before filming. No, I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. Maybe. So anyway, as Greg was saying, Penelope is new to Minnesota. Right. Uh, they just came out this last, within the last like 30 days or so. Uh, we did a flight of the other three that were available at the time, which was the, the regular one, the architect, and the cast strength. They didn't have this the day that you bought them yeah that i procured the other bottles but now bam they have it so here's the toasted barrel and greg you know we're all about science here at the bourbon note that's true i feel like if we're going to review this one we might have to also go back to the roots of the base model yeah and the, maybe the other cast because this one is like 110 Something like that. Yeah, we should probably throw that information out there, although you saw that on the title screen already. 110 char 3 and honey. I don't know what that means. What? Yeah. Well, let's hear yeah, let's, let's do that first. Yeah, let's put the... I don't know what that means. Toast level heavy. Oh, heavy. Greg needs his readers. Yeah, I'm... Toast level honey. Oh, it kind of looked like... So why would you say- You're not gonna make a don't call me honey joke right there? I mean, you- <laughs> Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Just falling apart. <laughs> Char three, toast heavy. So heavily toasted, right. secondary charred barrel, I'm assuming. A secondary toasted barrel. Okay. Hmm. Right, that's usually what that means. That's not how I envision what toasted barrel means. What I thought, because we've had a few toasted expressions now, the first bottling is in a, a normal yeah. charred barrel. Yep. Then I thought they put it in a barrel that's very, what you would think of lightly charred, because there's no char, it's just toasted. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Oh, it is? Oh, I would assume some, that that's well, what but there, well, I don't all know. that means. I wouldn't call that heavy, but I guess, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but let's well, see how it goes. I think as professional bourbon reviewers, we would have been more prepared than this. Ah. It's definitely got toasted barrel vibes to it. What is that? It's mean? always the s'mores. Graham crackery, a marshmallow. Getting a real richness though that is yeah. in the molasses kind of wheelhouse, which I wouldn't have expected. Sure. I wonder how it tastes. Let's find out. It does have an age statement, by the way. It what? It has an age statement. What is it? 347 years. Okay, perfect. This should be well. It's actually four years. Oaked. It's grainy. It's a little dusty as well. Maybe it's, I need another sip. It's all over the place. It has lots of things happening. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm not super blown away by this. So, the second sip finally kicked in. It has a solid <laughs> punch. 
Maybe you need one more sip. The f I mean, well, I was just gonna say the first sip didn't. The second one definitely had an, a lot better of a bite and a burn. Like it's got all these crazy different flavors that don't work together. Second sip kind of brought here. it together with more of the traditional kind of the corn sweetness, the barrel spice. A little bit of like cinnamon kind of traditional notes, caramel. I feel like there's, this is just lacking something. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's all over the place. It's got a definitely a different, I didn't pour quite enough of this, but I'll have to pour a little more so we can compare. I, but I don't know. It's I'm not saying like I don't like it. It's, it's plenty fine. I don't know that. Like I said, I'm not really terribly impressed with it, though. It it has a unique character that is, is hard to describe. Full disclosure also, I have said on multiple different reviews, Toasted Barrel is not necessarily my thing. Well, you know what? I there have been some expressions that I have not liked, like the Elijah Craig. It grew on me over time, yep. but I was extremely disappointed Basil Hayden. the first time. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that one all right for what it was. Sure. But 80 proof. Maybe I just don't understand toasted barrels because I think rather consistently, I've always thought they're kind of a bit weird. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Like, I don't I don't understand what they were going for. Maybe is a good way of like describing it. Like this is fine, but can you bring in the barrel? I mean, I think we should. Well, here's the regular one. Well, Bam. that's 80. That's 80 proof. Here's the cast this, strength. This is Bam. close to the same proof and should be the same bourbon without the toast. <laughs> yeah, but the nitro filtered really shows through there. Really like this one, but I want to compare it to this. Okay. Because the, the proof is similar. So should similar. we get this one out of here? Yeah. I don't think it's fair to go yeah, back down to 80 not. proof. All yeah. Right. Well, exactly. that one made a little guest appearance. Okay. Well, I've got another glass here. Let's get the. Uh, the barrel will go on the left. Barrel strength. And this one is? 118. Point? 49. Uh, I think it's 113.9. 56 point, yeah, so 113.9. Oh. It looks like 118. Um, so my opinion has been with um, toasted barrels, I really honestly feel like it takes something away from an already good bourbon. Well, that's that's kind of where I'm going with this, because now we've had several, and I'm kind of reaching that conclusion, because I absolutely love this. Yeah, we both like this. There was one in, I'm trying to think back to when we reviewed these, because we did the Architect, which is finished with French oak it's, state. It's, it's kind of like And finished. I can't remember, I knew one of them kind of gave a toasted barrel vibe. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it was that one, but. Mm -hmm. So I'm still on the toasted barrel here. I'm gonna give it a couple more. Snivs and sips, just to be fair. Attack of the dishwasher. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, so at liquor stores that have integrity, this is about 70 bucks. These are the architect, this and this. We're all yep. about 70 bucks. 65, 70. So that being said, I mean, I just, you know, and maybe I'm not the best person to review these because again, Toasted Barrel has really not historically been my thing. It's good, but I don't know that I would go out and buy one for my preferences, for what I like. I think the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, I like regular Elijah Craig small batch better. And I think I'm gonna reach the same conclusion here with Penelope. Mm -hmm. I like this one more than this. They're the same price and approximately the same proof. Um, well, let's get into the barrel strength here. And I just don't understand what they were going for to really, you know, provide something different because they, they seem very similar with just a little. It does make it a little to, sweeter in yeah. that s'moresy vibe, that yeah. graham cracker and marshmallow. But I feel like it kind of takes some of the bourbon flavors right. away. Yeah, like, exactly. It almost kind of becomes its own thing. Like now I'm sniffing this. <laughs> The barrel strength and it, it just smells like a good cast strength bourbon. Because it and is. It's like, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, That's what I'm looking exactly. for. There's something in the way that they do the toast process that adds an a aroma and a flavor that is just noticeable. Not yeah. bad, but noticeable. 
This does, I, I will say, and I can't remember if I said this in the last one, um, and maybe it's just because right now we've already had mm -hmm. bourbon before this one. Um, this one came across a little smoother than a 113 proof, but that just could yeah. be because, you know, yeah. just drank 110 proof or so. The palate's all primed up. The note that I'm getting on this that seems weird <coughs> is what I would typically refer to as like the youthful, yeah. kind of grainy. Yeah. Almost like a wet grass kind of note. Again, to bring back the Elijah Craig yeah. uh, toasted barrel, that's what I thought too the first time I had it. It's like, it smells like a young craft bourbon. Mm. And then I started getting those s'moresy notes. And I know a lot of other people have said, and that may have influenced me. Sure. But to be honest, when I first had it, I didn't get that at all. Mm -hmm. It was only when I got like halfway through the bottle, I would have a pour here and there just to revisit it. Not and, in one sitting. Yeah, yeah, not in one sitting. Um, and then I really did start to get that and it grew on me. Okay. And it's like, okay, I like this okay. Sure. But it's, you know, you've brought up before, like there's some bourbons that are like a once in a while pour, mm -hmm. but it's not something you want to just sure. sip on all the time. I put the toasted barrel ones in that category. Totally agree. They, it's not that they're too sweet and their occasional use bourbons, but it's just a sweetness that, I don't know, at least me, personally, I'm not in favor of all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this cast strength one is now starting to get, mm -hmm. I said it was a little smooth at first sip. I think I was just coming off of the other one. Yeah. So that's opening up a little bit. I like it up better, considerably. Totally agree. Again, the, the toasted barrel's not bad. It's definitely not a bad bourbon. Nope. But it's just not something that maybe I would gravitate towards but again that's just me i'm that whole category of bourbon is just not really my thing maybe i need to do some re more research on what exactly toasted barrel bourbon is and what the intent is because what they're looking for yeah it's time i wonder what happens when you take a toasted barrel bourbon and a cast drink bourbon and mix them together i'm gonna just try to so oh. <laughs> I'm actually gonna get some water between this. Yeah, we're not. I'm gonna give this blend a fighting chance. 223 proof here and eight years. Yeah. Three barrels. Three barrels at least. Ooh, that actually smells pretty good. I feel like it's it's got the, the regular bourbon notes. And <laughs> I'm going to do, start Thanks doing that where like every that. time I yeah, say that's going to be a longer pause. Yeah, totally. You know? Um, but it's got hints of that sweetness from the, the toasted barrel that I think complement it, but it's not quite as present. So maybe that's where maybe distillers that's the, should do. Yeah, do it like a blend. A of, blend of mm -hmm. toasted and well-aged and cast strength. Actually, I think that really would be a... Well, we'll <laughs> let's find out let's with, find the, with out. the taste here. Cheers. It's pretty nice. Nothing noticeable or like stand out. It's just a nice whiskey at this point. Mm -hmm. I feel like this added a little bit of that extra sweetness to it, but not so much. So I think maybe experimenting with blending barrels, that'd be interesting because we've drank bourbons on here that are obviously that are, you know, fusion series, sure. discovery series, yep. you know, that are blends of different ages and mash bills. That'd be interesting to blend a toasted barrel with a regular well-aged bourbon, like you just said. Yeah. I think so. And not get quite as much of the toasted influence. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, because it adds some sweetness, yeah. it adds some grain and some kind of grassy notes, which I think in small amounts are nice. Yeah. But just by itself, it's and maybe a little too much. And if they're done right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that would make a really nice bourbon. Yeah. Blend's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would buy a bottle of this just to get the blend though. If I'm going to the store, and I want to spend 70 bucks, I'm doing the cast strength every time. Or the Architect. The Architect's... Yeah, the Architect's good. Quite different. It's a but it does, wood finish series. You know, the Architect type. does kind of actually lean into that slightly, because it is wood finished mm -hmm. um, with toasted French oak staves. Right. So maybe that is kind of what that is. You know, the Architect is a cast strength version, and it just it's not quite as heavily influenced by a fully toasted But it's like 104 staves. proof. Okay, so it's close, but... Yeah. So yeah, I think that might be a happy medium between these two. Totally, yeah. So, all right, well this has been Penelope Toasted Barrel. A little guest appearance by Penelope Cast Strength. On the bourbon note, I'm Ben. I'm Greg.
Thanks for watching. Till next time. See you next time.